Good evening, gentlemen. My name is Rory Bernard. My umpire, Jeremy Epps, we're going to be your officials for today. If we have any questions, we're going to come to you guys because as, as captains, you were elected to be leaders of your team. So if we have any issues, we're coming to you. Any questions? We got a coin here. Saxy, you're the visitor. This is heads. This is tails. This is heads. This is tails. Saxy has won the toss, elected to defer to the second half. You want the ball? Garland will receive at this end. Let's come out. Have a great game.
is a presentation of GRS TV. We set the ball high. On top, can we so fly? Name in the bright lights. Looking like a star shot. We set the ball high. On top, can we so fly? Name in the bright lights. Looking like a star shot. Good evening here from Williams Stadium. I'm Houston Darden with my partner Thomas Hart. Today as the Garland Owls take on the Saxe Mustangs in this battle for District 9-6A. The race for district champs continues as Saxe leads the way with Wiley, with Wiley and Garland is right behind him with Wiley East. Thomas, what do you feel like today's keys of the game are for both teams? Well, for Garland, is having a more well-balanced attack. Last week they had about 20 passing yards in total. Just keep the turnovers to a minimum. They have to keep up with Saxe's offense, which averaged about 33 points per game. But for Saxe, it's just idolizing the playmakers. Keep doing what they've been doing. Been pretty effective so far. Yeah, adding on to that, you know, Saxe, you know, has a pretty high-powered offense with Kalik Lockett. You know, 847 yards on the season so far. I would only assume that he's going to get to that 1,000 mark this year. So, you know, you just got to find a way to contain him, but also keep your eyes around the field because Saxe has a lot of playmakers on that offensive side of the ball. Nice day for football today. Not too cold, not too, not too windy. Looking to see a good game played. Very important game for both, for both teams who are in the race for district champs. So Garland looked to improve after a pretty, pretty decent win last week against Naaman Forrest as this game is officially underway. And the receiver is going to get the ball, and he's going to take it to around the 20-yard line. And that, this will be the first drive for the Garland offense, led by quarterback Orlando Route. And good job by Sexy Special Teams there. They know it's going to be a high-powered game offensively from both sides, and not giving them the, the best position here, so. Garland looking to come out pretty quick, pretty heavy. Try to get some points on the board for this drive. As running back DeAdrian Hardy is in the backfield, top four rusher in 6A. And they're going to give it off quick. And that is almost intercepted by Cheta Ophelia. Dangerous play to start the game. Garland. Garland is lucky that it did not end up in the hands of Saxe this close to their own end zone. Yeah, Route just looks and sees him on a slant route. He sees his speedy sophomore, Tyrone Crothers. But that's going to be Ophelia and Jordan Nelson almost a pick on the first play. Second down, second and 10 for Garland. Looking to start moving the ball down the field. He's looking. He's looking, he throws it, and he's going to get it out to his receiver, and that's going to be a first down. And he's still going, and he's going to take him down around the 44-yard line. Nice play by Tyrone Crothers. Yeah, you see Route looking here in the pocket. He doesn't have much, but he gets it out last second. Throws it to that speedy sophomore we just said, Tyrone Crothers, for a 21-yard reception. This is already beating their passing numbers from last week against Naaman Forrest. And this is what you like to see against this Saxe team, not, not being too scared to make, make those throws down across the middle of the field. So you, you look to see them continue that throughout the whole game and not really give him the ball. As he looks in the pocket collapses, he rolls out to his right, he throws it, and it is off the hands of his receiver. The intended target being Keelan Davis, and it'll be a Garland second down. You see this right side of the defensive line for Saxe getting there, but the offensive line for Garland does a good job. Route gets the ball out. That's going to be Ivory Chester in coverage. Second and ten here. So far, Orlando Route doing good at navigating the pressure in the pocket and keeping keeping those defenders away from him so he can give himself time to make a play. Second down and ten. Ball on the 43-yard line. And he's going to hand it off to DeAdrian Hardy for his first carry of the game, and that is going to be a gain of around four yards. 
Hardy's going to get about three, four yards here. It's going to be number 99, Joseph Hampton, the senior defensive tackle. And they're going to have to do that all night. Hardy is top five in 6A in rushing yards. Third and seven. Ball is on the 46-yard line. Looks like Saxe is playing something like a man defense right now. Garland is talking to their sideline right now. And that is going to be a Garland timeout. And timeout, Garland. Their first yard timeout of the half. You know, as Garland takes a timeout, you wonder what's going on over there. You know, it looked like they were pretty set up, but all the receivers, you know, it looked like they were in a trips formation on the right side. But some of the receivers were trying to signal to a timeout. So you think it was, you know, what route am, am I supposed to be running or is this, am I supposed to be blocking on this play? Yeah, for sure. It's actually definitely noticed a mismatch. That is not what they want to see this early in the game. Hasn't even been two minutes, so. You know, if you were looking, Saxy was really loading up on that line, so it looked like they were gonna send the heat to a route right there, but luckily Garland recognized that, saw the, the mismatch and called the timeout there, using their first timeout of the half. Third and seven for Garland, looking to move the change here. Saxy definitely brings the heat and he gets the ball out, and that is gonna be a first and he's gonna continue going but he is brought down by the safety senior Quentin Ellis as Garland moves the chains. And once again, Saxe brings the pressure, but Route finds his favorite receiver. It's gonna be number four, Jaden Norwood. The speedy slot. And that's his insurance right there. They'll take that any day. First and 10 on a 37. They hike the ball, a quick pass to the outside. That'll be about gain of one to number eight, Adam Rodich. Rodich is kind of playing tight end, little receiver this year. Kind of like a security also as well. But good containment by the the corner there for Sexy. Garland, this drive so far for Garland has been pretty much what we need to see out of them tonight if they want to win this game is they hand it off to De'Adrian Hardy, who's going to go for about six yards. You know, De'Adrian Hardy, top five rusher. Saxe's going to have to find a way to uh, contain him tonight so he won't have a big game like he did last week against Naaman Forrest. Hardy's such a patient runner. Gets about seven on the carry. And there will be a flag, a lot of flags and Route looks a little injured in the back. We'll see what the refs have to say as they're talking to number 22, Sean DeVault. Yeah, Route looks really banged up here as they, there seems to be a look of concern right now for the players. This is not what you want to see in a big game. Ball start, offense, five yard penalty, third down. There's a false start on the offense, but right now, looks like the trainers are looking at Route's arm, and right now, I don't think you want to see that in your starting quarterback in a big game. And we'll be right back after these quick messages from GRS TV. back to this district game as you see Orlando route walking off the field uh, you wish the best for him hopefully it's not a major injury something he can come back from but now their backup quarterback Jaden Norwood is going to be coming in to fill in that spot and last year Norwood led this offense to the playoffs as the quarterback so it is very unfortunate for route but Garland still has a good chance tonight. Once again, you know, Saxe, they just got to stay in the right mindset. Don't 
Don't do nothing out of the ordinary. Keep a disciplined game plan. And they should come out. It should be a pretty good game overall. As he takes it to the left, he's going to take it. That's going to be a gain of around six yards as he runs out of bounds. And Norwood takes the quarterback option to the left here. Some pretty good blocking by Hardy there, but just not enough. It's going to be a fourth and two, but it looks like they're staying on the field going for it here. Looks like Garland is looking to take as many advantages as they can right now. Going for it on first, and they tried to get him to jump, but it looks like it did not work in their favor. Ball start. Offense. Number 71. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. That's going to be on Miguel Velasquez, the 6'3 uh, lineman. And that's going to move him back. And it looks like they're going to stay out there. Or there already seems to be some confusion. But it looks like they're going to stay out there and go for it. Ball is on the 34. The line to gain is the 29-yard line. And that just looks like it was all kinds of wrong as he gets taken down in the backfield for a loss. And that'll be a turnover on downs as his high-powered Saxe offense comes onto the field. That's going to be number 10, Corey Walls, the junior defensive lineman. And he just kind of looks unblocked, throws away the center very quickly. And Saxe's defense does the job here on a this crucial fourth down. This Brendan George led offense, who is third in 6A with 1,545 yards passing. You know, once again, this Saxe offense has the has the talent to make it far in the playoffs as they hand it off early. And that'll be a gain of around two yards. Brendan Haygood gets the carry here. Some good lead blocking, but this Garland linebacker course got to be probably the best in the district. Keeps him to about two yards there. Second and eight. Receiver comes in motion. And they're going to hand it off to Haygood again, who slips in the backfield. And that'll be a gain of zero. It's very loud on this Garland sideline. It's, it's going to be a third and eight here already. Not a position you normally see the Saxe team in. Uh, you know, Garland looking to contain Kalik Lockett as they hike the ball. He rose to his left. He throws it, and it was intended for Lockett off the hands with number 24, Terrence Green, in coverage. And that'll be a quick fourth down for the Saxe offense. Garland's defense doing the job. And that's not something you're going to see often from Lockett. It's not the prettiest ball ever, but that's a very good defensive back there, Terrence Green, an all-district player last year. And a third and out for Saxe already. You know, that's a pretty pretty big target to hit, 6-2. You know, it just bounces off his hands. And they're going to punt the ball away. Terrence Green feels this punt. He looks to take it up the right side, but it has no blockers and gets tackled out of bounds at around a 30-yard line. And Terrence Green is going to be a guy that you see all over the field. Had some rushes last week. He's had a lot of crucial interceptions, a lot of returns this year. He's their number one return man, but he's taken out of bounds there by Chase Thomas. And this Saxe defense back to make, keep this Garland team under wraps, but this Garland offense hasn't looked so bad so far. You know, already beating their passing numbers from last game, so. Obviously, they came with a game plan and are looking to stick to it. As they hand it off to Hardy, who takes it up, he's running hard, and that's going to be a gain of around five, but he's still going, and he goes down after gaining five on that play. And Hardy just kind of takes it up the middle here. Very quick out of his boots. Pushes about five defensive linemen. As the ref looks to have a conversation with both teams, you know, it's getting pretty chippy tonight. Knowing what's on the line for both of these teams. You know, Saxe looking to silence all the haters from last year and from the beginning of the year. Uh, you know, Saxe started 0-2 on the year, but they had a pretty 
a pretty hefty added district schedule, you know, and people saw that 0-2 and, and thought wrong, and they came in district district play and started showing people, don't let those two games deter your mind. We're here to win this thing. As Norwood takes it to the right, he has the blockers, and he gets forced out of bounds. And that'll be a gain of around three, and that'll be a first down. And that's the second option we've seen from Norwood already. He takes it to the opposite side of the field this time. I thought he got the first down there, but it looks just to be a little bit short. You know, you look to think, is Garland, does Garland have to change up the playbook a little bit with their starting quarterback being out? Chains haven't moved yet. So it will be a first down. The chains were a little behind there, but it'll be a Garland first down on the 40-yard line. And the pressure is coming. He throws the ball, and that is out of bounds. Intended for number 81, Zion Bonner. Just overthrew him to the point where he could not catch that. There's a sea of white jerseys running in Norwood, including Corey Walls, who we've already seen a few times tonight. We've already seen some good pressure from Saxe. It's just all about that coverage here. Second down and 10 as they do the read option, and he's going to be taken down from the back by number one, Cheddar O'Feely. One of the one of the stars on this defense, this sexy defense, you know. Mate rose in the rankings this year, and he's looking to continue to make his mark on this team as one of the one of the big names on this team. Yeah, Cheddar O'Feely is a highly recruited guy. He's actually committed to Texas Tech. He knew where he was going the whole time. Third and seven on the 43. He drops back to pass. He unloads it to number 12. And that'll be incomplete. And there's two flags. And that'll more than likely be defensive P.I. Not something you want to see right now. Pass interference. Defense, number 17. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. You know, and you like to see the fact that Norwood is not afraid to throw the ball. But if you look on the sideline here, you see Route was warming up a little bit. You like to see that right now. But you know, Norwood, you know, he might be he might be the backup, but right now he's not playing scared, and that's what you like to see. He's taking his shots down the field. He's doing his thing right now, so at least you know he's trying his best out there. As it is first down, ball is on the 41. He draws back to pass. It's a QB draw, but he is taken down fast by number 22, Sean Duvall again. And that'll be a loss of around two yards. And Route is looking to come back in this game now. That's great to see. Sean Duvall, the, the junior defensive lineman slash linebacker, takes him down. He had nowhere to go. It'll be second and 15 on the 46. Garland to look to make this this is a pretty decent, decent drive. As Route drops back and passes over the middle, and that is almost intercepted by number seven, Vashawn Brunswick. And that'll make that a third and long for this Garland offense. Vashawn Brunswick, the linebacker, just kind of surveys the field here. Sees it coming the whole time. Just missed the pick, but it is third and 15. Yeah, you see Route throw it. Just tipped off the hands. He was looking for Keelan Davis there. Looks like he was moving like a user on Madden there. And it's third and 15. They drop back to pass. It is a short pass to the Adrian Hardy. And there's a flag in the backfield. Look to see what the refs call on this one. Looked like a hold there. Number 66. Holding. Offense. Number 66. That penalty declined. Result of the play. Fourth down. And that'll be a Garland three and out. You know, right now, it's looking like this is going to be a pretty, pretty big de defensive battle right now. You know, Garland is stepping up to the task to hold, 
holding this um, this sexy offense, and uh, they're doing a pretty good job at doing that. You know, you just got to start getting the offense rolling, start moving the ball down the field more. And that's something you didn't think you were going to see going into this game at all. You know, you, you come into this game, seeing the numbers, you think it's going to be a shootout, a high-scoring affair, but right now it's not looking like it. Is that ball will be out at around the 23-yard line. But yeah, like like I was saying, coming into this game, you know, you expect a high-scoring affair, not something, you know, not a pretty defensive, defensive heavy game. But the defensive lovers, the defense lovers are probably very much enjoying this game right now. Oh, for sure. You've seen a lot of pass rush involved. Pretty good deflected ball so far. But I don't know if that's going to be the case. As Brendan George drops back to throw, he launches it deep. It is intended for a Khalid Lockett, and that'll be a flag. And that'll, that is not what you want to see. Pass interference, defense, number 24. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. See, as you can see, Brendan George, you know who he's looking to get the ball to all night tonight. One of his biggest playmakers on this offense. And you know, Garland just has to find a way to stop that. As long as Saxe sees that one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, I feel like they're gonna take advantage of that all night. Most definitely. They say Green got a lot of hands you there, so it's gonna be about a 15-yard penalty. You no, know, Green being 5'9 and Lockett being 6'2. As that pass is overthrown by George, Intended target being Kendrick Hanks, another big playmaker on this team from the running back position. But sometimes you'll see him go out for some routes, playing that that Alvin Kamara type role. As right there, he went on a little little swing route. It's just overthrown. You know, if you hit him in the chest, you see him take him for like another extra five. As they hand it off to Haygood, who finds a hole and he's going to keep running. That is a first down, and that's a big hit by Trent Green. Don't let that size fool you, but regardless, that is a first down for this Saxe offense, and as, as it looks like they're starting to get things rolling. Yeah, you see that after a, after a play. He takes that 20 yards. Terrence Green takes him down, but he's going to have to go out because of that helmet. With him being out, now you ha really have a mismatch, but that Garland defensive line gets to Haygood pretty quick. You know, they saw that big run and was like, hey, we're not letting that happen again, and we're going to show you why as they get past that Saxy O-line. Yeah, Brennan Haygood tries to take it to the right side, but to no avail. The Carcamo brothers, five Garland defenders just took them down immediately. You know, th that, that interior part of the Garland defense, you know, the linebackers and the, you know, the D-line, those are some big boys down there. So if you're looking to get past them, you got to make it move as he gets the ball to lock it. And him and Terrence Green has, have some words for each other. You know, I wouldn't expect these two teams to have a pretty, wouldn't, wouldn't expect them to not have chippiness throughout this game. You know, the refs already had to talk to him. As you can see, Lockett tried to stiff arm him there out of bounds and Green did not take that very lightly. As it's third and nine on the 41, Brennan George drops the ball, he picks it up, he launches it deep for Lockett and that is gonna be, he caught it, but it is out of bounds. You know, right now, George looks like he's only looking at Lockett right now. You look to see when he's going to start start spreading the wealth to everyone else as he fumbles with the ball after the snap. Yeah, Terrence Green has been very good guarding Kalik tonight. Kalik has got about 100 yards plus per game receiving. But you love to see this. Yeah, Saxe's not slowing up on the aggression. Fourth and nine, they're going to go for it, and they're not going to get it. And that'll be a turnover on downs. This Garland defense is definitely showing out tonight. But yeah, like you said, you know, that that Lockett and George connection is something real, but you can't you can't really just rely on that with good defenses like this. You gotta be able to spread the wealth. And but you know, Garland, they're doing a good job of slowing down Lockett this game. This Garland offense comes back out. Looking to put the first points on the board after eight minutes. 
Ball on the 41 yard line. Timeout, Saxy. Their first charge time out of the half. As Saxy takes their first time out of the break, we'll be right back going to break after these messages from GRS TV. Orlando Route hands the ball off to DeAdrian Hardy, who goes for about two, and helmets come off on the left side. This is a pretty aggressive game for the most part. You know, these, these offenses and defenses going at it right now. Hardy tries to take it to the right side here. His lineman falls, but that's going to be Brunswick and Ophelia for the combined tackle. Keeps him to two yards there. Garland looking to be talking at our sideline right now. Saxy doing a pretty good job at containing the pass, but right now it just doesn't seem like they have a solidified answer for DeAdrian Hardy, who takes it for a for first down. As you saw, it, out of that cut right there, that was a nice little jump cut to find the hole, and he busted it through for another Garland first down. And Hardy had about 300 yards rushing last week. We talked about a well-balanced attack, but if it keeps working, why not use it? And at the same time, you're keeping, you're getting that time of possession up, keep keeping the ball away from Saxy as they go to pass here. And that is a, that is a good catch right there. That is a first down. And he goes down around the 35 yard line as Garland moves the chains again. Route looks and finds Crethers in space. That's gonna be 15 yards. And he's very fast. That was a, Great catch by Crothers, you know, caught the ball away from him and managed to put, pull it back in and continue for a couple extra yards right there as it's going to be first and down on the 35. Garland looking to, looking to put some points on the board. Saxy brings the heat. He throws it deep, and it is just a little behind him. Looks like the receiver had, thought the ball was going something somewhere else, and that is Jalen Norwood, who is the intended target. We'll go to break after these quick messages from GRS TV. And we're, we're back at this scoreless defensive affair here at Williams Stadium. 63. Josh Kalu is down on the field right now. So we'll take a minute to talk about the, uh, the district right now. You know, it's extremely close with Saxe and Wiley tied at the top and then Wiley East and Garland tied at the bottom for in the playoffs. You know, tomorrow's a pretty important game with Wiley and Wiley East going against each other. And this is looking like a pretty good year for District 9 6 8 football. Yeah, back to back days with all four leading playoff teams. And you see, Rowlett is just on the verge in Lakeview. We still have some weeks to play, but definitely two games that could change the standings for sure. You know, Saxe being 4-0 in district, remaining schedule being South Garland, Wiley, and North Garland High School. 
you know, not the hardest of a remaining schedule and Garland having S South Garland and Wiley. So both teams looking to win out to solidify their spot and Saxe looking to keep going to get district champs once again. As Kalu is luckily and gladly making his way off the field. That's something you hate to see. But it's a next man up mentality for Garland. And just to keep the ball moving, they're at the 40 or 35. You know, it looks like that was a, it was a, under the circumstances it was bad, but that is a well needed break for this Garland offense as they come back out and are looking to take the lead in this first quarter. With two minutes and 40 seconds to go, it'll be second and 10 on the 35 yard line. As Garland looks to have two backs in the backfield. And they hand it off and he's gonna get stopped and he gets up but he gets pushes back real quick. That is Jaden Norwood in the backfield. Once again, like you said, Thomas, we're seeing him all over the field today. Looks like he wants to make a big impact on this game. Yeah, when you have Hardy and Norwood both in the backfield, Saxe is kind of flustered. He's gonna get about four yards before the pile moves, so second and six here. Adrian Hardy back in the backfield alone with route. Third down and six, looking to move the chains here. He drops back, looks to his right. He gets the ball out, and that is almost intercepted again by Cheta O'Feely. Same situation as the first play of the game. Tip ball, and it's just off the hands of O'Feely. You know, if he if he grabs onto that, those long strides could have took him back to the house. Yeah, definitely a little crossing route here. Tries to find Keelan Davis. Just falls out of it. It's a good pass, but it O'Feely has to have the next one. And surprisingly, so far, we have not seen a singular punt this game. Both both teams going for it on fourth down as he, he launches it deep, and he catches the ball, and he's going to keep taking it down. And he's still up, and he gets taken down around the 12-yard line. What a pass, and what, what, a, what a drive by this Garland offense so far. And you love to see it. Ralph finds Rodich downfield. That's going to be 26 yards. Just blown coverage there, and they're going tempo. This is the kind of momentum you'd like to see against this team as Hardy takes it, but he is stopped pretty quick by that wonderful Saxy D-line right there. But, you know, after a play like that, a big play like that puts some life in your offense, uh, puts some down in the red zone now. So regardless, you might end up with points out of this. You just got to find a way to capitalize off of this. As Norwood is back in the backfield, he throws it quick to the outside. And it is broken up by number 21, Jordan Nelson. Good coverage on that. The intended target being Tyrone Crothers. Yeah, Rauch just tries to find Crothers. Crothers has about five plus targets tonight. That is beautiful coverage by Jordan Nelson. These Garland fans want a PI, but I think that's just beautiful coverage there. You know, it looked like that was that was where he was going to go for the whole play. They snapped the ball, and he immediately looked left to Crothers. So it looked like he wanted that touchdown for Crothers, but it'll be third and seven. As they hand it off to Hardy, he's making cuts. He runs over a defender, and that is going to be a Garland touchdown, putting up the first points of the game, DeAdrian Hardy. Wow. DeAdrian Hardy's... On the third and seven, I was kind of curious to see why they were running it, but Hardy's showing why he's top four and 6A in rushing yards. And just run over his defenders. 6-0 now. As Pedro Orozco puts it through the middle, making it 7-0. But as you can see, there's that hard running we're talking about with Hardy. You know, he has like two defenders on his back, and that last defender just got a taste of that shoulder pad, and he laid him down to get into the end zone, making the score now 7-0. As we can watch the replay right here, he fights off multiple defenders and he trucks that last one to get in. So 
Garland taking the momentum here early in this game. And that's that was one of our keys for, for today for Garland to win. And it looks like they're that was number one on their list today, too. Garland comes out to kick the ball back to Saxe. You know, this is not the Saxe offense we're used to seeing. You know, it's not really, not really up tempo as we're used to seeing. You know, we've seen a lot of deep balls right so far, but you know, if they want to have a chance of winning this game, George has to get off of his Kalik Lockett mindset and start spreading the wealth a little bit. Absolutely, Terrence Green usually playing safety, he's playing boundary corner, and he's doing a good job of stopping Lockett. And as you said, the wealth needs to be spread. And they have plenty of time here in the first quarter. Speed. Sounds like the stadium is getting pretty rowdy. You know, they have something to cheer for as they're up 7 0. And they kick the ball off. And that's going to take a. And that. Wow. So Garland is going to get the ball back. That is not something you really want to see. That looks like it was a mistake on Josh Ridge's part. But Garland is going to get the ball back. And right now, it just looks like Garland has all the momentum in the world. Yeah, Ridges kind of just realized this last second that this isn't a punt. This is a kickoff. And, you know, if it's past 10 yards, your coach is telling you to get that ball. St. Dickens is the hero here. And Garland has perfect field position at the 23-yard line. So this Garland offense is back on the field. It's not looking like this sexy defense is getting that much of a break right now. And that's not something you want to see. You need your defense to get a pretty lengthy break in games like this as Garland likes to ground and pound, as you see right here, as Adrian Harding is still moving the ball. That'll be a nice gain of around seven. Adrian Hardy kind of reminds you of a Le'Veon Bell, staying patient usually, but runs over multiple defenders again, and I would not want to tackle him. It's about six on that carry. As Garland looks to be talking to their, their sideline again, you know, you might, you don't know what you're going to see right now. Garland's playing, playing pretty balanced as they hand it off to Hardy again, who somehow always manages to fall forward. Throughout this first quarter, what, from what I've seen, we've seen Hardy fall forward every time he's had the ball. He rarely ever falls backwards. That is true. Hardy looks to be in the backfield. 47, Corey Bennett had him, but he just keeps falling forward. He's a very gifted running back. And definitely good size. Your score here at Williams Stadium 7-0 as we take a break with the teams here from GRS TV. And this coming back from break, it's looking like the Owls have all the momentum tonight. And Saxe is looking to find an answer to slow them down tonight. And right now, you know, Gar Garland has seven first downs on the night and a total of 126 yards. And it's a pretty balanced, pretty balanced attack from Garland so far. And that's that's one thing that I thought they really needed in order to win this game to keep Saxony on their toes, you know, not passing too much and not relying on De'Adrian Hardy. Most certainly, and we've already seen triple the amount of passing yards in the first quarter that we did the whole last week for Garland, so they're playing good when they need to. And De'Adrian Hardy in the backfield, you know, that is just, he, that's a guy that runs hard, you know, in a one-on-one -on -one situation, you look, you look at him to win. Like you said earlier, Le'Veon Bell type runner. He's patient, but he's not scared to put lay the hit on you as he does not get a gain there. 
And it'll be a Garland third down. That's going to be number 99, Joseph Hampton. Just gets off his blocker and stops him. It's going to be fourth and four. That's a loss of one. It's going to be Pedro Orozco probably here for the field goal. You know, even though, you know, you didn't come out with a touchdown, but, you know, having one of the better kickers in the district, um, you know, you're going to come out, you might come out with points as that goes right through the uprights, and that'll make it 10-0 here at Williams Stadium. But yeah, like I said, with Garland, their main thing, they have to find a way to get points on almost every single drive, you know. You can't waste drives, you know, going three and out real quick. You got to be able to make something shake against the Saxy team because once that offense gets rolling, it's rolling, and it's pretty hard to stop. No, it most certainly feels like a different type of vibe tonight. It's 10-0. They... They got the coin toss, and they said, we'll take the ball. And they got a two-possession lead here. And they're showing out for their fans on senior night, and it shows. You know, Saxe making some some uh, mental mistakes here on that on that kickoff where, you know, Ridges saw the ball. I guess he thought it was a punt, but he let it go, and then Garland got it. They got punt points off of that. So uh, on this one, on this drive, Saxe is looking to capitalize and get back into this game and put some points on the board. As he kicks the ball pretty deep, and Hanks is going to bring it out. And he's running pretty hard, but that is a nice hit to stop him, but he's still on his feet. And he gets taken down at the five-yard line. And that'll be good field position for that Garland defense. And Saxe looks like they have themselves in a bind here. And that's something we've seen a lot this year from Garland. The special team's always running very hard. They lay the lick on him right here. And then that's going to be Ronald Stamey that just keeps moving him backwards to about the five-yard line. So that's going to be very tough field position for Saxe's offense. You know, that first hit was the... Was During the, the kick, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, return team, number 41. The penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down, Saxon. So if things weren't already looking bad with them being at the five, they got moved back to about the three-yard line. So Saxon has themselves in, in even more of a, of a bind here. And they're just, now their main hope is trying to, trying to get, get out of this, this situation right here is Brendan George takes it, and he takes it to around the eight-yard line. That's another thing with Brendan George. You know, we might talk about his passing stats and what he can do as a passer, but sometimes people tend to forget what he can do as a runner. You know, he's not afraid to run the ball. He's not afraid to put that shoulder down and take a hit. And he, he can affect the defense in, in a multitude of ways. As he snaps the ball, he looks to pass it. And he hits Santana Quinn, and he drops that ball. You know, Saxe's, Saxe has a pretty talented receiver in core, so, you know, a drop out of, out of any of these guys is something that's pretty unheard of. You know, if this was practice, I'm pretty sure the coach would have made him drop and give him 10 right there. Yeah. And it's a tough position to be dropping the ball, but Saxe is up to the challenge. Third and five, he drops back to pass. And Santana Quinn makes up for that drop, moving the chains, and that'll be a sexy first down. Santana Quinn most certainly makes over that drop. Gets the first down there. Gets some separation off Ronald Stamey, and all you need is about three yards of separation for a receiver. And he had more than enough. They're going to hand off the ball. And that's that's going to be Kend Kendra Little on the carry. He's going to fall forward for a gain of about three. And Saxe, you know, they started at the three. They're on the 19 now. They're making pretty good ground. It's been around three minutes so far. And it looks like they only have one receiver, but they're going to swing it out. It's a little again, and he's going to get wrapped up quick. 
by number 20, Amarion Webb. And that's going to be a gain of none. That's going to be a sexy third and seven. This little flip to the right. He has nowhere to go. That's going to be number 20, Marion Webb, as you said. He's a junior, undersized, many people would say, but not on that play. But almost certainly a passing situation here for Saxe on third down. Third and eight on the 21. Webb was coming off the right side. Brendan George rolls out, and he throws it, and that's going to be a first down and some with Santana Quinn. And he's going to take it up to around the 34-yard line. And, you know, with Lockett being the main focus on this Garland defense, it looks like Saxe is looking to take advantage of that and hit some of their other targets now. As Santana Quinn, that is, what, three targets in a row for him now? Two catches, and they were both for first down. So he's looking like he's going to make a pretty big impact on this game. First and 10 on the 38-yard line. They're going to hand it off. And that's going to be a game of around three to four yards. Brendan Haygood on the carry. And who else but Amarion Webb on this tackle? He kind of pushes off his blocker right there. His helmet falls off, but he's been all over the place tonight. You know, these, these DBs look undersized, but they're not afraid of, of some physicality, and they hand it off. And he's going to make a defender miss. He's going to keep going. He has the block, and that is going to be a massive gain as he's forced out of bounds by, by number 24. That'll be a first down for Saxe. And that's going to be a 23-yard carry there. He most certainly got the edge there, but he gets the extra yardage from a block by Robbie Rothrock, the receiver for the Mustangs. And it's all about the team working together to try and get on board right here. You know, you like to see your receivers blocking upfield, too, and they, as they hand it off to Hanks again, who gets brought down for a loss of around three. So, you know, after that big game, Carlos D-line locked in. And it was like, I'm not going to let you do that again. And they got back there pretty quick, as you see the the middle of that sexy old line kind of just fell apart. That's going to be Cade McKay, the sophomore defensive lineman. Six foot three, 210, projectile for a Saturday. That is a big, big sophomore right there. And he's probably not done growing. And he's going to pass it to Quinn, but that pass was just a little too low. You know, you look to hit on those kind of routes, you look to hit them in stride and, you know, see what they can do if they can make some shake. But that's going to be a third and 13 on a 39 for this Saxe offense. And like you said, that, that quick tempo that Saxe's been using all, all year is kind of a little bit flustered right here. It's third and 13. This is the third, third and long we've seen on this drive already. Let's see what they do. You know, we haven't seen Saxe in this kind of position really much. But it looks like George is looking down the field. And he's going to throw it. And who else to Khalid Lockett? And that is wonderful coverage by Terrence Green. Terrence Green is having himself a night right now against the four-star receiver. And, you know, Lockett is not liking that. But as you can see, the, the sideline for Garland, they, they are loving the defense. You know, like to see that the ref let him play. You know, it looked like he was a little handsy towards the top of there, grabbing his arms a little bit. But once again, Saxe is not going for it. It'll be a fourth and 13 unless they do a little pooch kick here. And they're going to indeed go for it. George looks down the field for Quinn, and that hits his hands again. And that is his second drop of the night. And right now, you just got to have, you got to have uh, what I call the Dory syndrome. You got to have short-term memory loss with plays like that. And you just got to do it and move on. You got to do it and move on. Come back the next, next drive and do better. Absolutely. Quinn has shown he is about it. And he is six foot two. All frame. He's been wide open all tonight. But now it's Saxe's defense. And they'll have to stop DeAdrian Hardy, who has a lot of yardage tonight. Make that 40 rushing yards. And it'll be first and 10 from the 39 as Hardy, who we were just talking about, but he gets taken down by Ophelia. 
you know, you can't expect to just get around Ophelia and be done with it. You got to account for those long arms he has to reach, reach and grab onto you. And that is a strong, strong guy, you know. He just pulls him down and throws him down. And that'll be a loss of two. That's a Big 12 guy. Not many defensive ends are going to be able to take him down. He high steps and he's very quick around the edge, but Ophelia gets him there. As Garland looks to be going trips on the right, route rolls out, he throws it, and that is a complete pass to number 19, Crothers, and he's going to keep going. And he knows that tonight is looking to be his night along with Hardy. And he takes it past the 50-yard line. That will be a first down for Garland. Once again, I know I've stated it a lot before, but this Garland offense has all the momentum in the world. And make that 50 yards for Crothers tonight receiving. He's been all over the place. And that, that was a pretty good throw by route. You know, threw it right above that corner, but put it where Crothers could get it. And there's going to be a flag on the play. Let's see what the ref has to say about this one. Ball start. Offense, number 56. Five-yard penalty, third down. That's going to be on Chris Parody. That's going to move them back five put them on the 48. It's going to be a first and 15 for this Garland offense. But you know, Route, he came back after that injury early in the game, and right now he's just taking over right now with his passes and just managing this game how he wants to. As he drops back, he fumbles with it, and he just goes to the ground, not risking, not risking anything further damaging happening on this drive. That'll be a, a pretty decent loss. And this is about the third fumble we've seen so far tonight, but every single one has kind of been taken care of, but it's gonna be Corey Walls that's credited for the sack. And you look to see the those numbers on, on those fumbles go down. As you see number 22 on the on the edge, Sean DeVault for Saxy. He's looking to get in that backfield. He's itching to get back there. Second and 18 for Garland, and there's going to be whistles blown. Prior to the snap, timeout, Garland. Their second charge timeout of the half. And that's going to be Garland's second timeout, and we're going to take another break with him after a quick message from GRS TV. It is 10-0 here at Williams Stadium with the Garland Owls rolling against this Mustang defense. As it's second and 18, as Route gets sacked. And that'll be a pretty bad loss as it looks like this sexy defense is starting to starting to show why, why they're undefeated right now. And Corey Walls makes the guard look just flustered there. And he's been all over the place tonight. He'll get another sack there. Second of his stride. Corey Walls has a pretty big frame on him. You see there's an injured player on the field. And once again, it's route. And that's not something you want to see twice in one day. So it looks like they're, they might be getting Norwood ready to go once, once again. So while we give him time to rest, we're going to go to a quick break here. on GRS TV.
And Orlando Rout walks this off, and he's going to sit on the sideline for a little bit. And Jaden Norwood back on the field at quarterback. But if I'm Garland, I'm not too scared from what we saw from him earlier. He's not afraid to take his shots. So we're going to see what they're going to do with him now. As he drops back to pass, and he unloads it deep. And that is going to be just simply overthrown. But for a receiver, Norwood has a pretty big arm. You yeah, know, Norwood drops back there to Shadow Ophelia was just right there. He had to let it fly. Just overthrown. He was looking for a speedy receiver, Keelan Davis. But pretty good coverage there by number 24, Quentin Ellis again. So this is going to be the first punt of the night from Garland. That's a pretty, pretty high punt. He's going to fair catch it. He's going to be down around the 27-yard line. So this sexy offense comes back out. So far, they are pointless. But they're looking to, looking to make that change a little bit on this drive. Looking to get some form of points. Looking to have a better drive here, too. Brendan George having, wouldn't say his best game tonight so far, but it's only the second quarter with 425 left to go in this half. Receiver is in motion, and he's going to hit him, and who, who else but a Marion Webb who read that the whole way. He saw that, that receiver coming in motion. He watched him, and he read that perfectly. Yeah, beautiful read here by Marion Webb. Before it even started, they try to find Rothrock here, but nowhere to go. Back about five yards. So there's going to be second and 15 for the Mustangs, and that's going to be a drop pass by Haygood. And that's not something you really want to see right now. That's going to be Caleb Karkamo who is there. But that drop is definitely not what you want to see. He almost picked it off, but just like that, 10 seconds in, it's third and long, third and 15 at that, and most certainly a passing situation again. You know, that's not something you're used to seeing from any anybody that can catch the ball on this sexy side as Santana Quinn takes it. And he's looking to take it even further. He gets around the edge, and he gets tripped up. That's definitely going to be a sexy first down. As number three, O'Shea Johnson trips him up so he doesn't get any further, but there's a flag on the field. Hold it. Offense, number 67. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Third down. And that Leon Lamb holding is going to negate that first down. Yeah, this play was beautiful. Beautiful blocking. Santana Quinn throws off the linebacker there. Takes it 37 yards, but... To no avail. It's going to be third and long. So third and third and fifteen for the 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 Saxy Mustangs. Once again, like you said earlier, my fault. Third and twenty for the Saxy Mustangs. Looks to be another passing situation. It can't get any better than that. But they're going to give it to Lockett on a nice little bubble screen. He's looking to make something happen, but he gets taken down by Caleb Carcamo. As he gets it past the line of scrimmage, so that's going to be Saxy's first punt of the night. Yeah, you look to get your four-star receiver the ball there. That's only going to be, you've held him under 20 yards, but now looks to be a punt. Beautiful defense there by Garland. Right now, Garland has no one back to receive the punt. They have green right there at the safety spot, but it looks like Garland is staying ready for the fake. And that's going to be a pretty high punt. Oh, that's something you definitely want to get out the way of. Green picks it up, and they're going to get it. That's going to be a punt return for Garland. Green making a very much heads up play, as that's going to be 16 to 0. You know, that's not really a punt you like to see right here, but Green makes a big heads-up play right here. Yeah, Garland kind of thinks fake here. 
the ball keeps going back with the wind. Terrence Green sees the ball. He's he kind of thinks about it. There's nobody to go. He has to beat one one guy. And Terrence Green, an electrifying return man, takes that for the touchdown. A three possession game, not what you thought you were gonna see, but you know that was just unlucky. But that's that's just smart play playing by this Garland this Garland team. You know they were ready they were ready for that fake. So Green was up close. And that that allowed him to be able to pick that ball up and take it back. It'll, if you if we ever do the replay, they uh, looks like the teams both thought that they were just gonna leave it. So Green Green looked around, picked it up, and took it himself. So that's gonna make this 17 to zero as we look at the replay here. And if you do remember, Saxy didn't recover the ball on a kick. So that's the second mistake we've seen from the Saxy special team. And Terrence Green, just a very heads up play. And he's excited about it. He's been doing a very good job of containing Kalik Lockett. And he gets a touchdown. But yeah, as you saw, everybody kind of stopped moving there, thinking that, you know, they were about to hear a whistle. But they didn't hear that whistle until Green cross broke the plane. So that's going to be 17 0 as Garland gets ready to kick the ball off. And this Garland side of the, of the stadium is very very hyped right now as they have something to be hyped for they win if they win this game that puts them even closer in the ranks to win district champs and they're gonna kick the ball off deep and they're gonna let it no it doesn't get out so Hanks picks it up and he's running hard and he has some open room and it he's going he gets past the 40 that's a nice block He's going to keep going, and that's going to be a sexy kick return. Wow. So after a heads-up play by, by Green earlier, and I hear him hearing some whistles on the field. During the return, illegal block in the back. Return team, number 92. The penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. And just like that, when you thought Saxy got some momentum, that's going to put them right back to where they started. Yeah, I didn't think Hanks would really get much out of that play, but he takes that 98 yards. That block in the back is going to be right at the start of the play on about the 10-yard line. You know, once again, that's another mistake by this Saxy special teams. That's, that's three, three costly mistakes so far. One costing them points. So, once again, Saxy started from the five yard line. The last time they were in this predicament, they got nothing out of it. And they throw it quick to Santana Quinn, who was looking to fall, but he stayed up and kept going. And he's going to get the first down. Santana Quinn has been very good using all of his correction. That's going to be. Fabian Ibarra is a 13-yard gain, but they got two minutes to get down this field. As they hand it off, he shakes off the defender. He shakes him Marion Webb, and he's going to take it up the side. He's going to keep going with a good block from Lockett, and that's going to be a pretty big gain. He's out around the 43-yard line. And Vernon Haygood takes this misdirection, almost taken down by Gabriel Williams, takes away Webb, some pretty good blocking by Rothrock again, and gets around that edge, and he gets to about the 42. That's going to be a 22-yard gain for Haygood. And that's the first missed tackle from Webb we're going to see tonight. It's actually looking to be talking to their off their sideline. So Saxe still has life in them. They're not getting beat up too early. That's what you like to see, you know, good mentality from this team, not, not letting anything get phased them too early on. He's going to throw it, number 14, and he's going to take it up. And that's another big game. It's going to be number 14, Robbie Rothrock. And he's going to be down around the 30, 36-yard line. Two plays, 40 yards. They're going to be in tempo here, but beautiful blocking to provide that. Timeout, Garland. Their third and final timeout of the half. 
That's going to be a timeout for Garland looking to looking to looking to slow it down, slow down that Saxy offense. But we're going to take a break here from GRS TV. It's 17-0 here at Williams Stadium, and it's a sexy first down at the 36-yard line as they pass the ball to number three, Fabian Ibarra, and he's going to be taken down shortly after getting the ball. But right now, Garland looking to keep Saxe to as minimal points as possible considering Saxe gets the ball back in the second half. It's going to be second and four. And it has a quick pass to Khalif Lockett, who, who almost makes a defender miss, but he falls himself. That is going to be number 28, Aiden Onchwer, on the tackle. Timeout, Saxy. Their second timeout of the half. That's going to be a Saxy timeout. We're going to keep it here. Like I said, Garland looking to keep Saxy off the board going into halftime because the big, the bigger the lead you can have going into halftime. Please reset the game clock to one minute, 16 seconds. The bigger of a lead you can have going into halftime, you know, the better chance you, you the better chance you have of winning this game. And Garland obviously understands that, you know, giving up two chunk plays pretty quickly with Saxy starting at the five yard line is pretty ridiculous. Most certainly, it's been a good drive. And saxy has been doing that tonight. They've been good on offense, but it's always been the the third down. They're usually third and long, but it's third and three here, so we're starting to see something different. 33 on the 29 yard line. George has all the time in the world. He's going to take it himself. Carcamo in pursuit. And that is a good block by Haygood. But there's going to be a flag coming in. We're going to see what the refs have, have to say about this one. That flag came from all the way up the end zone. That was going to be a 14 yard run. A good block there by the offense. But, but it looks like Haygood thinks it's on himself. After discussion, there's no foul on the play for a blind side block. First down. So they're going to disregard that flag, and that's going to be a sexy first down. See, as you can see, Haygood thought it was on him. You know, that was a good block so George could get some more yards, and they threw the flag, and he thought it was on himself. As it is first down and 10 on the 15 yard line, Saxy in scoring position. Hand it off to Haygood. He's going to take it up for about five yards. Inching closer and closer to that goal line. Yeah, Haygood is very quick out of his boots. Takes it five yards. He's undersized for running back, but you definitely wouldn't know that. He's been very good tonight. Clock is running, though. 37 seconds. He throws it up to, to lock it. Once again, Terrence Green is locking up Lockett. I think Lockett only has a couple catches on the night so far, which is not something you're used to really seeing from him. And that's Lockett's favorite route, that little fade route to the right when he's a man on man. And Terrence Green has nearly five pass breakups tonight. It's been fantastic. Lockett with only three receptions on the night. Brennan George rolls out. He's going to take it himself, but he's going to get taken down once again by Aiden Onchwer. And it's going to be, I think he got the first down. So the clock stops. No need for change anymore. He's going to keep rolling. He's going to take it himself. And waiting for the refs. And that is going to be a sexy touchdown, making it 17 to 6. And that's going to be a quarterback draw. We didn't see that angle for us but they needed that for some life and as you can see Brennan George is hyped up too going in the half 
uh, you know, put some, finally put some points on the board. Hopefully the kicker makes this and puts it up. And it is good, making it 17 to 7. Brennan George making everything happen on that drive towards the end. So unless, unless something crazy happens here. Ah, this is looking like it's going to be a pretty good second half. Most certainly. And Saxe responded. Taking care of that uh, bad field position they've had. But they've been moving the ball very well tonight. And Khalid Lockett's getting more involved. He has about 26 yards receiving. And Brennan Haygood, what a night for him. He has seven yards of carry, 66 rushing yards. And he's been electrifying, to say the least. You know, we've seen some pretty good receiver play with Crothers leading the way with 51 yards tonight. But I think I think the the flashing part of tonight is the defense is really with you know the corners showing out tonight, the D lines on both sides, and they're gonna kick the ball off. That's gonna go back pretty far. He's gonna take it, but he's gonna take it around the right. And that's gonna be, he's gonna be taken out around a 30, 34 yard line, 33 yard line. As we've said, it's getting pretty chippy. Norwood gets hit late, but nothing called. It's gonna be 13 yard for him, 13 yard run for him. 12 seconds to go. Let's see what they do. You know, you look to see, is Garland gonna, you know, Play it a little conservative here, kneel the ball out, and just go go into the locker rooms. Or are they going to try and, you know, take some shots downfield? Because looks like Saxy's playing somewhat of a prevent defense. And Garland is just going to kneel it out. And we're going to go to halftime. Your score here at Williams Stadium, 17-7. And it looks like we're in for a pretty good second half. As we're going to go into halftime, pretty pleased with this first half here at GRS TV.
Pacers officers are Junior Lieutenant Jennifer Wynn, Junior Lieutenant Hayden Gibson, Senior Lieutenant Carmen Quinn, our First Lieutenant Michaela Mathis, and in the center, your two-time captain, Emma Upchurch. Tonight, the swimsters will perform a palm routine to tear the roof off. The Saxon High School Mustang Band is proud to present for your halftime entertainment our 2023 UIL contest show, Coloring Silence. On the page, punctuation performs its grammatical function, and in the mind of the reader, it does more than that. It tells the reader how to hum the teeth. Tonight, under the field direction of Bella Bennett, Kayla Bellion, Anthony Nico, Samantha Joe, and Billy Evans, the band will perform Kayla Black, the Typo, Type C, and the 12 Overture. Director is Greg Alexander, Jordan Dave, Brett Ryan, Garrett Tucker, and Stephen Ellis. The color guard director is Megan Benavidez. The mayor would like to thank the band leaders and the Saxon High School and GSD administration for all their help and support this year. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your Saxon High School Mustang Band! <laughs> Thank you. 
behalf of the Mustang Band. We thank you. Juarez, Madison Coons, 
Brianna Macias. Sion Nugesi. Lisa Rodriguez. Catherine Rose. Julianne Wiley. Thank you for your leadership and dedication. and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, the Garland High School Fine Arts Department is proud to present the award-winning Mighty Al Band. Tonight, we are excited to honor our senior class of 2024. Honoring the band seniors of 2024 is a well-deserved tribute to these students who have dedicated their time and talents to the band program. Their hard work and dedication, especially during difficult times, is very much appreciated. These seniors have made significant contributions to the band program, both musically and as leaders. They have inspired and mentored younger students and they have helped create a positive and supportive band community. As they prepare to graduate, we wish them all their best in their future endeavors. We know that they will continue to make a positive impact on the world, just as they have done in the band program. Congratulations to the band seniors of 2024. Alvarado, Belinda Amaya, Elizabeth Arriola, Ayani Barrientos, Jacob Coker, Angelica Contreras, Henry Cutright, Diego Gilbuquerque, Ciara Hart, Omar Hernandez, Lindsay Koo, Regina Macias, Eric Marquez, Jeremiah Mendoza, Nathaniel Navarro, Nian Tran, Congratulations to the Mob Senior Class of 2024.
Mob thanked the following GISD administrators. Joseph Figarelli, Director of Fine Arts. Duke Barnett, Principal of Garland High School. Dr. Ricardo Lopez, Superintendent. The rest of the Garland ISD administration and Board of Trustees. Thank you for your continued support of the Fine Arts of Garland ISD. The Garland High School Band is under the direction of Salvador Guerrero, Ryan Oster, Joseph Kahn, Robin Alexander. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, your 2023 Garland High School Mighty Owl Band! It is 17-7 here in this District 9 6A matchup between the Garland Owls and the Saxe Mustangs. Garland so far has this game, is in the driver's seat, and we're going to run you through the highlights of the first half. You know, the first half was filled with a lot of big moments, a lot of mental mistakes, hard running from both teams and chunk plays, as we can see the aggression on that first one. You know, hey, good. Hega is taking it for a big run there. And Green right there, who's my player of the half, takes him down. But, you know, both teams were not afraid to run the ball. There's, there's happiness throughout the whole stadium. You know, once again, there's those chunk plays I was talking about on both sides. And De'Adrian Hardy, Hardy uh, you know, averaging 3.4 yards a carry, has a touchdown at 38 yards. So, and then, you know, Special teams has been has been an interesting sight. A lot of mental mistakes from Saxe, as you can see right here. Um, Terrence Green also has a punt return on the night, and so Saxe, as you can see, Saxe's offense here. They started to get things moving closer to the end of the first half. As you can see, Hager taking it up the side for a big run, and this is that. Terrence Green punt return I was talking about. As you can see, the ball bounces, no one's looking. He picks it up and takes it back. And that, if I'm not mistaken, that made it 17 to seven. Well, 17 to zero at the time. And then Saxe responded as Haygood once again with that hard running I was talking about. And this is where Saxe made it seven. And as we can see, Saxe Saxe's offense is finally rolling. So they're looking to keep that momentum going into the, the second half as they receive the ball. And Orozco kicks it there very high. And Saxe gets the ball. Offside. Kicking team, number 23. The five-yard penalty will be added to the end of the kick. First down. So they're going to get an extra five off of that. So they were going to get the ball at the 38. So now they get the ball at the 43. Some pretty good field position for Saxe to start the half. So Brendan George is back on the field after scoring his first touchdown of the night. And he's looking to bring this Saxe team back and keep their lock on, the top, on that top spot in the district. As they hand it off to Haygood who's gonna run it hard, but it's taken down quickly by number seven, Caleb Karkamo. 
after a nice gain of around five yards. Yeah, Haygood takes that one six yards. He's been running very hard tonight. He has, that's going to make it 72 yards rushing. So, Is it handed off to Haygood again, who struts the defender off, and that looks like he's going to go the distance. Terrence Green is in pursuit, but no one is there, and that's going to be a touchdown for Haygood, and that puts Saxe right back in this ball game. And, you know, here, here we go. That Saxe offense is starting to get it rolling. It was a struggling first half, but they're getting it going. And as we talked about that momentum in the, at the end of the second half, or the second quarter, I apologize. Haygood has been running hard tonight. That's going to be 51 yards and ultimately 123 yards rushing tonight. He's been leading the pack, to say the least. You know, with the way Hardy is running tonight, he is not the leading rusher. It is Haygood who definitely has over 100 on the night. And uh, that's going to make your score 17 of 14. And Garland on top. And Garland comes out to receive this pass. I mean, this, this kick. Sorry. But like I said earlier, I didn't get to really talk about it. But Terrence Green, that first half, was a sight to see. Holding Kalik Lockett. To only only 26 yards, that entire receiving court not having their best night tonight. You know, normally we're seeing at least 100 out of one of those guys. And you talk about spreading the wealth this whole game. That was the the main point for Saxe's offense, and they struggled to do that. But they finally started getting the ball to uh, Santana Quinn. But we saw some struggles when Lockett wasn't open. Who would be the main guy? But they're starting to figure it out. 14 unanswered. And they're going to kick the ball off. They're going to keep it away from Green. But Green is definitely going to try and block for his returner here. As he does, he makes a lane. And that's a pretty good return up until the 47-yard line. Our number 12, Keelan Davis, the speedy guy. That's going to be a 29-yard run for Tyrone Crothers there. And... You talk about not getting, not giving Terrence Green a chance there, but Tyrone Crothers is just as quick, and he's just a sophomore, so they have they have two more years of him, and he's been very impressive tonight. 48 yard, good possession, good field possession for Garland as well. Route and company back on offense, looking to make something happen here to keep their lead extended through this entire game to win. He's going to drop back, throws it across the middle, and that is too far up for his receiver to go get the intended target, Keelan Davis. And he looked for Keelan Davis on that little crossing route coming to the left side of the field. We look at this replay. Route looks at Mashawn Brunswick almost had that. And the corner almost did as well. You know, we've seen Brunswick almost everywhere running plays. He's been disrupting passes all night. So we're looking to see a more, more out of him this quarter as the Adrian Hardy takes it, and he's tackled pretty quick. That'll be a gain of about two. And that's going to be who else but Sean DeVault, that linebacker for the last two years, who's a junior, who's a two-year starter, and he's just been very impressive. Look at this replay. Hardy is a very strong runner, but Sean DeVault's showing that this time he's not going to fall forward. I'm going to take him. It's going to be third and eight on the 50-yard line. Route throws in, and that is intercepted by who else other than Brunswick. He's going to make a defender miss, and he's going to get taken out of bounds by number 11, DeAdrian Hardy. But it looks like that Garland momentum we were talking about is finally swung over to Saxe, and Saxe is now rolling, looking to see the offense get some of that too. And once again, on a crossing route last time, Brunswick almost had a pick. This time it's going to be a little curl trying to throw it to Norwood, the slot there. Brunswick makes up for it, and that momentum is completely gone, it looks like. 14 unanswered, and Saxe's taking control. It's going to be first and 10. They hand it off to Haygood. But he's going to be tackled real quick behind the line of scrimmage by number five, Zaylen Reynolds, the, the linebacker. Zaylen Reynolds. One of the fastest 
outside linebackers, slash middle linebackers in the district, that sideline to sideline speed, and he takes them down for loss of two. And you know, when you look at him, you don't really see a linebacker. I think he's a corner, but that's a little overthrown. Like I said, you know, that speed, that's not regular linebacker speed. So he can definitely keep up with the fastest of them out there. The one thing Saxe's offense has struggled with tonight is converting on that third and long. Curious to see what they do here. As, as it is third and 12 on the 42 yard line. Another third and long situation. They're going to pass it. He looks for Lockett and he finally gets him. And that's going to be a first down as Lockett finally gets the best of Terrence Green tonight. Who, for the most part, has done a pretty good job at containing Lockett. That was the design play. They were definitely looking past. Fakes the handoff to Haygood. And it's good to see Lockett involved tonight. First and 10 from the 21. That's a quick pass out to Hanks, and he's going to look for something to happen. He's going to get on the outside. Is he going to get there? I think he stepped out of bounds early. And we're going to see where the ref marks this. They're going to mark it at around the seven-yard line. Yeah, he good. Moves around the block. We've seen number 14 blocking very good tonight. He steps out just around the seven-yard line. But in the red zone, in the first down. One of, another fumble snap tonight. That's the fourth tonight. But, you know, I like to compare compare Hanks. You know, we've seen him at running back a little this season. This this season, I like to compare him to, to Alvin Kamara. You know, he has the same running style, very patient. But when he sees it, he go, goes and gets that hole. And he's also very dangerous in the, pat, in, in the receiving, as we see him at receiver right now. Yeah, most certainly it looks like a receiver out there in that trips. They're going to they're gonna hand it off to Haygood, who's taking down pretty quick, and we saw number seven, Caleb Carcamo, on the tackle. Yeah, Caleb Carcamo, an outstanding player, an all-district player. He's been all over the place tonight as a linebacker. Takes him down there, and it's a third and nine for Saxey. Ball is on the seven yard line. Saxe's in the red zone looking to strike here to get their first lead of the night. George rolls out to the right with some urgency. He looks, he trucks. And that's gonna be short. He's gonna be first. And that's what I was talking about earlier with, with George. You know, he's not scared to, to put his, his shoulder down and try to do it himself. Most well, certainly, fourth and goal here. And once again, he's going to try and get it. And that's going to be a touchdown. But he looks a little, well, he looked a little shaken up there, but he's going to get up perfectly fine. That's his second touchdown of the night, and he's feeling himself. Yeah, fourth and goal here. You see a lot of quarterback sneaks these days, but that's going to be 20 unanswered with a chance to go up 21 to 17. You know, a lot of quarterback sneaks, none like the brotherly shove. But they get it done there to get their first lead of the night. That is 21 unanswered points. And like I said, once that Saxe offense gets rolling, no pun intended, but it's like a stampede of Mustangs coming at you. It's hard to stop it. But that's going to be 21-17. And Saxe's Garland's about out to field this kickoff. We talked about Saxe starting slow, but reverting back to their old ways and finally getting uh, Lockett involved. Lockett has 47 yards receiving now. He's the leading receiver for Saxe. And it just had to eventually happen because he's too good for it not to be successful. You know, you mentioned the wind earlier on how it wasn't really affecting the game. But throughout the game, the wind has picked up pretty, pretty big, and um, it's starting to affect the, these kicks a lot. We've seen it on some of the punts and a lot of the kickoffs, two good kickers, and not a lot of their kicks are going out of the end zone as Terrence Green fumbles with it, and he's going to bring it out. He finds a hole, but he gets brought down by number 19, 
Chase Thomas. Yeah, for a second there, with the way Saxy special teams was looking, it looked like they almost got the fumble, but Chase Thomas ultimately with the tackle, he's hyped up. Garland has the ball at the 18, 17 yard line. Garland looking to, to answer back to Saxy's points put up in this whole, this third quarter. As they have Jaden Norwood and Hardy in the backfield. There's gonna be a flag on the play. Ball start, offense, number four. Five yard penalty, first down. And that's gonna be on Jaden Norwood. But if you're Garland, you don't wanna see these penalties start stacking up throughout this game. You know, so far, having five penalties for 35 yards, you don't wanna see that number increase. Six penalties for 40 yards, sorry. You don't wanna see that number increase, but Jaden Norwood gets the handoff. And he got latched onto by number one, Chet O'Feely, once again. Chet O'Feely is the best pass rusher and the best run defender on this team. And Norwood's in this backfield, takes a nasty cut, but ultimately he only gets three yards because this run defense has got something to play for right now. Looks like they're kicking it into overdrive to slow down De'Adrian Hardy. Hardy. So it's gonna be second and 12, ball on the 15 yard line. Route drops back to pass, and who else is it? Other than Texas Tech commit Cheddar O'Feely, he's letting them know he got back there and I got you. Yeah, Cheddar O'Feely, you could just tell he wanted this one. Has had a zero in the column for Saxon tonight, but he's a very outstanding pass rusher. And he's just an unstoppable force. So this is going to be one of Garland's first third and long situations. Gonna be third and 20 on the seven yard line. Look to see what they're gonna do here as they hand it off to Hardy who finds a hole, makes the defender miss. He's one on one with Quinn Ellis and he runs him over. But to no avail, that's gonna be a gain of around, around 10 to get him back past the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Hardy takes this one, throws off some defenders and He's still running hard. That's going to be again around eight. It's going to be fourth and 12. But some good defensive plays by Saxe to give their offense another chance with six minutes left. Pedro Orozco out to punt this ball. Hopefully we, he's obviously kicking against the wind, so he's looking to get this ball as far away from his own end zone as possible. That's a high kick, and that's a that's gonna drop down, and that's gonna be fielded around 34-yard line. And Saxy's offense coming back out with this momentum, and you can you're starting to hear it on on Saxy's side of the of the stadium. As you talked about, that wind is really picking up, most definitely, and these punts have been going the wrong way of the special team. It's a 35 yard line. Saxy's got good field position here. It was Trish at the bottom of your screen, but they hand it off to Haygood who finds a hole. And that's a good block by Lockett. And he's gonna get another first down. You know, Garland gotta stop, has to stop letting these chunk plays happen with the with the running. Yeah, Haygood almost thought he was gonna go to the end zone on this play. That's a very big hole. Right side of the offensive line did a great job. Lockett did a good job blocking there. He takes it for 21. And it's going to be first and 10. Saxy is in the red zone again. We're looking to see what they're going to do. Looks like they're changing something here. They're going to fake the handoff, looking for Lockett. And that is a... Oh, and that's going to be incomplete. That was almost a Max Preps top 10 play. The incomplete pass. As Second a, down. As the ref confirms it, that is almost a Max Preps top 10 catch of the year. That is a ridiculous grab, but just Terrence Green does a good job throwing that thing out. 
to make that an incompletion because if he doesn't put his hand in there, that's a touchdown. As you saw, Lockett stretched out for that and brought it in and almost had it. But Terrence Green with the with the nice awareness and punches it out before he goes down and has full possession. As they pass it to number number three, Fabian Ibarra, for a nice gain of around four yards. Yeah, Don Travion Hill right there is right there to stop him, to give Ibarra no chance of evading that. Drops back to pass, he rolls to his right. Webb is in pursuit, he misses and he jumps for it. Hurts, I almost called him Jalen Hurts for a second. Brendan George is taking this game into his own hands, scoring, scoring three touchdowns at a Saxe's four. Yeah, Brendan George sees this open to the right side. I can't believe the jump he just made. He's not scared of anybody. He is putting his body on the line. As he does the door. The DJ Khaled would say the Shadur. But you wonder what the conversation was in that locker room as the kick goes up, and it is good. But you wonder what the conversation was in the locker room to make George, you know, it wasn't, he didn't have his, that wasn't his best first half of the year. But, you know, he comes back and he, start, he starts throwing it a little bit, you know. First half, he had just under 100 yards at, like, 68. And now he comes back, has 90, 129 yards on the night. But, you know, he came back and started just, is just taking this game into his own hands. Most certainly. And this is a guy that is top five, 6A in passing. And this electrifying offense is, we thought from the start it would be a different game, but it's 28 on answer for Saxe, and they're, they're figuring it out. It's tough to stop them with certain moments. At the beginning of the game, you know, I said, let the playmakers make plays. And that is definitely what one of this team's biggest playmakers is doing. And Saxe is going to kick this ball off to Garland once again as this goes out the back of the end zone. But Garland looking to come back. That's 28 unanswered points. Garland, Garland's looking like they lost pretty much all of their momentum from the first half. And one thing Garland needs to do now is get, get the ball to their playmakers in space. And tonight that's been Tyrone Brothers with 51 receiving yards and he's very fast, just a sophomore. And he's out there at the wideout position, the bottom of your screen. Just route is back there, first and 10 on the 25. They hand it off to Hardy, who's looking for something to, something to happen. And he gets out at the 30 and that's gonna be a gain of five. It's gonna be a second and five for Garland. And as we look at this replay, Takes that to the right. Some good blocking there by number four, Jaden Norwood. He would have had nothing if Norwood didn't have a great block there. It's going to be second and four on a 31. Garland, they're going to hand it off to Hardy again, who's going to fall forward for a gain of around three. And Hardy's running hard, but this defensive line for Saxe has something to play for, that's for sure. That's going to be number 17, Jackson King, the junior defensive back. And it's going to be third and two for this Garland offense, looking to move the chains here. Saxe looks like they're looks like they want to send the heat on them right now. And they hand the ball off, and that is going to be a fumble. And Saxe recovered it. There's a flag around the 30-yard line. Saxe says they got it. The refs say they got it. And there's a flag. So we'll see what the refs have to say to this. It just looked like it was a botched handoff. Yeah, we saw a lot of this, these botched handoffs in the first half. But Corey Bennett takes, a, takes advantage of that. Garland's offense is wide There's no foul on the play. First down, Saxe. Just like that, Saxe has the ball. Because as, as we can see, that handoff was messed up from the jump. Yeah, Hardy kind of runs 
kind of hits route in the head a little bit. So they run into each other. Sexy takes advantage there for sure. Looks like Hardy was ready to go get that first down, and route just wasn't on the same same tempo as them. But George is back, and he's rolling out to his right, looks to throw. Caleb Carcamo in pursuit, and he forces him out of bounds after a gain of around three. There's another flag. Brennan George takes this to the right, though. Carcamo with that very good speed. All district guy, as we previously mentioned. Let's see what the refs have to say. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, offense, number 67, 15-yard penalty, second down. And that's going to be a Leon Lamb unnecessary roughness. And that's going to put them deep back behind the line of scrimmage. Making it a first and long. As we look at this replay, he jumps over him like a pancake block. But it's going to be unnecessary roughness. As they hand it off to number eight, who's looking to make it happen, but is brought down by the duo of Caleb Carcamo. Yeah, Cade McKay and Caleb Carcamo get together on that play. And it's hard to get past Cade McKay as we previously mentioned. He's six foot three, 210 pounds. That was number eight, Josh Ridge on the carry. As George drops back to throw, he looks, he throws it downfield to Santana Quinn, and that's definitely gonna be a, a defensive PI. Don Travion Hill in coverage just kind of falls on top of, and that's gonna be a 15 yard penalty. Pass interference, defense, number nine. The penalty is 15 yards from the previous spot and an automatic first down. So if you look on the bright side, that cuts out a potential touchdown. Most certainly, with how Santana Quinn's been playing tonight, you never know. It's gonna be first and 10 from the 24 to hand off to Ridge who finds a hole and he's taken down fast. By number five, Zaylen Reynolds. It's gonna be a 15 yard carry, but Zaylen Reynolds is just as fast as the running backs. He's, we talked about how fast he is. First and first and nine on the on the nine yard line. They hand it off to Ridge, who gets the gain of about one. Yeah, Caleb Carcamo once again letting him know where. Looks like the tempo is slowing down a little bit for this Saxe offense. Second and eight on the eight yard line. And he, George takes it himself, makes a defender miss, makes another one miss. He's still going, but it's brought down. But it's like George is just very slippery tonight. Most definitely, and you see him running to the left. As a, he's not a dual threat quarterback, but he's extremely quick with it and taken down by Zaylen Reynolds, but not after he gets inside the five yard line. So it is gonna be third and four on the four yard line. Saxe is looking to punch this in and increase their lead even more by eight, 18. He drops back to throw, he takes it up. And that's going to be another, another Brendan George running uh, touchdown. And that's going to make it 34 to 17. That is his fourth rushing touchdown of the night. Yeah, as we just talked about, he just evades the pressure from Gabriel Williams there. Slips around and still gets in. He's been very, very impressive tonight. And this game is looking like a complete 
completely different game than it was in the first half with Sexy scoring 35 unanswered points. Garland just, just doesn't have an answer, but we have an answer for this break as we take a break here from Garland from GRS TV. And it is 35-17 here at Williams Stadium. Saxy is going to kick the ball off. Garland is going to receive. as a deep kick. That's going to get fielded by Green. He brings it up. And he's going to get tackled very quick. I'm surprised no penalty was called there. Kind of gets thrown by at the back of his pads. But... It's gonna be number two, Dane Norberg on the on the tackle there. And once again, Garland starting in that in that dangerous area back there on on the eleven yard line. And this just looked like Saxy's give, giving Garland what they gave them first half, you know, starting deep in their own territory, and it's it's just not something you want to see. So we're looking to see them get out and start scoring the ball a little more. As they fumble the hand, the, the snap, and he just falls on it. Yeah, it's got to be the fifth or sixth pre-snap, not pre-snap, but fumble in the backfield. Looks like it was just out of his reach. Just falls down, and that's going to be Nico Ward's credited for the sack. Smart play, though. See the seal white jerseys. He went ahead and fell on the ground. He's going to roll out. He's slipped some defenders, but is ultimately taken down. And my number 29, Tyler Rice. And that's the senior safety. Tyler Rice just kind of mirrored him the whole play. He saw him coming the whole time. He got up just a bit, but he was there to take him down. It's going to be third and 10 here. Third and 10 on the 11-yard line. Garland looking to make something shake here. Snap the ball. He drops back to pass. It's a nice little shovel pass, but it is incomplete. And that's going to result in a fourth down. I get it, the shovel passes. I don't know if that's the best option right there. Is it the Hardy's not the the biggest threat receiving wise, and that's gonna be fourth and ten. They're gonna have to punt. Pedro Orozco is gonna kick this from his own end zone. Trying not to get Saxy such good such good field position. That's a one of the better kicks of the night, but it takes a Garland bounce. That's going to be down at around 48-yard line. So once again, Saxy has that ball back. And they're looking to increase their lead by even more. I'm curious to see if Saxy starts to run that clock a little bit with 52 seconds. They have Brennan Haygood, who's averaging about 10.3 yards a carry. He's got 145 yards tonight rushing and a touchdown. Five rushing touchdowns overall. Saxy is completely dominating the rushing stat with an overall of 217 to Garland's 50. So from the looks of it, if they wanted to, they could just start running the clock right now. But it looks like they're going to continue with their game plan as they throw it out to Hanks. 
who falls and he looks a little shaken up on the sideline. He felt kind of awkward, but there was a sea of flags. So we're going to see what's going on. Kind of stretched his knee. And he pops up and he's running, so that's a good sign. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number three. The 15-yard penalty is added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. And that's going to be on the senior senior defensive back, O'Shea Johnson. Yeah, the all-district player just kind of grabs him by the face mask at the end of the play. It looks like Garland, Garland's starting to stack up on the penalties here. That's not what you want to see this late in the game in an important game like this. So number 27, Keandre Little takes it for a gain of about four. Out four. The mm. clock did not start on the snap. Please reset the game clock to 34 seconds. The clock will start on my signal. 40 seconds on the play clock. As we're having a little little clock troubles here. It's always good to have two running backs that can always come in at any time and just Always have fresh legs. With 28 seconds and running in this third quarter, he's looking to lock it, and that is almost caught once again on a nice little simple slant route right there. As yes, we look at this replay, yeah, it runs a little slant, low crosser to the left. Almost in there. Had to, like, get a possession catch, but just nice. dropped it. As you can see, George was watching him the whole way through. But as you can see, this 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 sexy offense is not looking to really slow things down after that first half. As the clock is slowly dwindling down to that third, to that fourth quarter. And that's gonna be Keandre Little for the six yard. And it looks like Saxy's just gonna let that clock run out. So going at the end of the third quarter. Going into the fourth is gonna be 35-17. I'm Houston Darden here with GRS TV. Thirty-five unanswered points by this Garland team. As Saxe has the lead, thirty-five to seventeen, at the start of the fourth quarter. And it is Saxe's ball on the thirteen, and they're looking to extend their lead even more so they can start putting the icing on this cake. For Garland, it's always a first down run, but down eighteen, you have to. To get the ball to your receivers not go three and out like they have been doing you know we've seen a change up in the play calling you know first half it was a couple runs and then throw it but now we're not really seeing that many pass plays we've seen a lot of running and as you can see that that resulted in the uh, the quarter ending so they're looking to those coaches are looking to find something that works so they can start getting that ball down the field and in as minimal, minimal time spent as possible. And yeah, most certainly, Coach Mark Barons is very aware of this situation, and he just gives it to Keontae Little for three. The clock is moving. Second and six as they throw it, and that's just overthrown. But, you know, you got to give up to the Saxe team. You know, 17, they were down. Down uh, for, uh, 10 points going in the, into the half. At one point, they were scoreless. But that's how you know they are a well-coached team. You know, they didn't let that get to them. 
they just said, hey, let's let's keep playing the game we're playing. And as you can see, it's working out for them in the end. As it is the mindset of a playoff team. As it is third and eight on the 11-yard line. As they run a little, little trickery there, and that looks like it's going to be a touchdown. And that's going to make it 41 to 17 as we saw the one of the lead blockers being Brendan George there. Once again, he's doing everything tonight. A little trickery. Little gives it to number nine. Kendrick Hanks for the 11 yard rush. And that's going to be 41 17. 41 on answer points for Saxon. The ref is trying to tell him to hold on. And looking to increase their lead as that kick is up and it is good. Making it 42 to 17 as we take a break here at GRS TV. Three hundred and sixty-eight total yards of offense for this Saxe team. Most of that coming from this second half, as you can see from the score being forty-two to seventeen. And Saxe getting ready to kick this ball back to Garland, who's looking to find a way to spark a comeback here, so they can stay in the race for district champs. As this Garland, this Garland side of the stadium is still going. They're still, they're still loud. And Jaden Norwood is going to get that, but gets just swarmed real quick by Saxe. And Saxe's trying to say they have the ball, but the refs are going to say it's still Garland's ball. So oh, that, that high kick that we saw multiple times because of the win tonight. And at the 30, just a swarm of six Saxe Mustangs. Takes down Norwood very fast. And this is going to be first and 10 on the 30. Route looking to manage his way to come back here as they hand it off to Hardy, who slips out of the defender, and it, it is hit hard out of bounds by who else than Sean DeVault. And he has some words for, for Hardy as he runs back to his, his side of the field. We talked about the patience of Hardy just throwing off defenders and staying tough after getting hit very hard. That's going to be a gain of nine. Second and one for Garland at the 39-yard line. And you also got to give credit to that footwork, being able to come out of a tackle like that and keep going. And they're going to hand off to him again up the middle. That's going to be number 14. Sorry, that's going to be the Adrian Hardy on the, on the gain there. Hardy, there really isn't a hole there, but he still just powers his way through. That's going to be a gain of seven. First down on the 46-yard line. Looks like Garland is going for more of a more of a tempo offense here. As Hardy is still in the backfield, route drops back to throw, and that's going to be incomplete. It looks like number 19. Looks like he wanted something there. But it's going to be second, second and ten, and that stops the clock. Yeah, very good coverage there by Jordan Nelson. He tried to get Crothers there on that little fade route to the left, but nothing going there. So it's going to be second and ten. Look to see what what they're doing here, trying to find somehow, some way, just where I could come back as they hand it off to Hardy who finds a hole, and he's, he's still running hard regardless of the score. 
That's going to be a gain of around nine yards. Yeah, most certainly. You give your left side of the line a break. One play later, he takes it to the right side. He takes it for nine again. He's been outstanding tonight. That clock is moving. 31 on the 45. You know, he looks like you got to... You got to move a little quicker when it comes to these plays, especially when the clock is moving in a situation like this. You know, now, now you got to start taking some shots down the field. As that is almost intercepted by Ivory Chester, the senior defensive back, but it just bounces off his hands. That's a lot of, that's a lot of dropped interceptions tonight. Yeah, most definitely. Ivory Chester just beats the route there, tries to get it to... Keelan Davis on the outside, but it's fourth and one here. It's, you have to get this if you're Garland. If I'm not mistaken, Saxe has four four dropped interceptions tonight. Timeout, Saxe. Their first charge timeout of the half. And that's going to be a timeout from Saxe, which is unregular, but we're going to take a break here at GRS TV. Nine and a half minutes left to go. Garland looking to get the ball down the field as they hand it off to Norwood. And he's brought down quick and hard by number 44, Nico Wards. And that's going to be a turnover on downs, which is just a, a gut punch to this Owl offense. Yeah, Nico Wards just gets back there in a hurry. He's already got a sack tonight. He's looking great on both ends as a pass rusher. So now Saxe... And a pretty has a pretty comfortable lead. So it's look like you look to see them just drain the clock so they can go home and get up out of here. But no, they're gonna throw it deep to Quinn, and that is in the pocket right there. And that's gonna be a first down. As they're finally opening up that passing playbook here tonight. Yeah, Santana Quinn, he's been open all night. He's the boundary receiver. Just kind of beats him by three yards, and that's all it takes, as we've said. Santana Quinn uses all six foot two of his body to get to that ball. They say hand it off again, but he's brought down quick by Caleb Carcamo. But you know, one of my keys for for Saxe tonight was to take advantage of the fact that Garland was more than likely going to focus on Lockett tonight, and they're doing a pretty good job at that. Most certainly. This time he tries to take it up the middle with Josh Ridge, but ultimately nowhere to go. Caleb Carcamo with double digit tackles tonight. So it's gonna be second and 10 on the 22 yard line. George drops back, he throws it, looking for Quinn again, and that is another touchdown. Saxe is not holding off on the Owls. And that's gonna make it 48 to 17, 48 and unanswered points. Make that 71 yards for Santana Quinn. That's a 22-yard reception. Just beats him twice in a row. Drops it right in the bucket. Very easy touchdown for Quinn. And he'll take that any day of the week. The other junior receiver, so they have him and Lockett for one more season. You know, this is looking like that might be a, a deadly combo next year. Looking to see both of them on Saturdays. That's going to be 49 to 17, as the Owls have not managed to muster up a score since that that punt return by Terrence Green. As we're going to take a break here at Garland GRS TV.
49-17 with 8.24 left to go in this, this windy game. Saxy's just just unopened the can and has is going at Gar has been going at Garland this whole second half. There's probably gonna be a false start on the kicking team. The Garland is gonna get this, take it up, up the left. He's looking to find something. He stays up and he get, goes out around the 45. At least this Garland team still has some life in him. Most certainly, and Tyrone Crothers, we've talked about him. Just a sophomore. Very quick Offside. around the Kicking team, number 49. The five-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. First down, Garland. Very quick. And they'll take advantage of that, and they'll get the ball to the 50 with that run and that off start. So Garland looking to just, just lessen this deficit a little bit, and that's going to be a false start. False start. Offense, number 56, five-yard penalty, first down. This is going to be on the senior lineman, Austin Smith. So it's starting to look like the mental mistakes are piling up for this, gar this Garland deep offense. As they're going to hand the ball off to Hardy, who still has a lot in his tank. And he's running with defenders on his back, and that is a first down. Yeah, Hardy's going to take this one on the right side of the line for 16 yards. Takes that misdirection, jukes off the defender there, and just carries the ball with three defenders on his back. He's a very strong running back. And there's gonna be another flag on the play. It's gonna be a false start on the left side. False start, offense, number 66. Five yard penalty, first down. And that's gonna be on the senior. Salomon Hallaby. That's going to be another flag. That's going to be Garland's ninth, ninth flag on the night. All these flags total up to around 75 yards. And Garland's just, just looking to make something happen to keep something positive going into, into their bye week. As Hardy is still running, but it's hit hard. You know, get a gain of around around three yards. Yeah, Hardy gets a little bit of that yardage back. It's gonna be second, 15 here. Yeah, as Garland is talking to their talking to their sideline here. Route takes the ball, drops back to his pass, passes it to Norwood. Using his speed, and he's he's gonna keep going. Has Tyler Rice to beat, and he gets pushed out of bounds around the eight the eight yard line, and that's gonna put Garland in the red zone. We've been waiting for this tonight. Norwood is a very explosive athlete. He's played quarterback tonight. He's been on special teams. He takes this one all the way to the 46 yards and to the 10 yard line. It's gonna be first and goal for Garland. And this is going to be Garland's first time in the red zone since the first half. As they hand it off to Hardy, who gets taken down pretty quick by Shane, Sean DeVault. And he's had himself a pretty big night tonight. Most certainly. Sean DeVault is just a junior. He's already in the second year starting on this defense. And you know he's strong if he's taking Hardy down. Hardy's been falling forward with three people on his back all night. You know, one thing about Saxy, since I've since I've been watching Saxy, they've had a they have a lot of young talent on that sideline over there. You know, they can bring in whoever they want and they'll be able to make some sort of play. You know, a lot of their playmakers, they still got a year left as they throw it up to number 19, and that's gonna be incomplete. But they, they still got a lot of years with some of these these players as there's an injury in back in the end zone. But he gets up, he looks fine. But yeah, Saxy has a lot of depth on that sideline. Look at this replay. He tries to find Crothers in the corner of the end zone, a jump ball, but Jake Perry, the junior defensive back with the pass breakup. With 6.15 left to go in the fourth quarter, 49-17, third and 10 on the 10-yard line. Norwood and Hart 
Hardy in the backfield. He rolls to his right. He throws it. Is he going to get in? No. He's going to be down at around the one-yard line. And it's going to be Keelan Davis on the reception. Yeah, Route just moves the line to the right side. Finds Keelan Davis. Very good effort there by number seven, Deshaun Brunswick. It's the it's a nine-yard catch there, but it's the one-yard line. Most certainly a rush here to Hardy. Looking to get his second touchdown of the night. And just like we called it, and that's going to be a touchdown. The Adrian Hardy's second touchdown on the night to shorten this lead. It's still a big lead, but at least they're, they're still fighting to the end, making it 23 to 49. Yeah, Hardy just shy of 100 yards rushing tonight. About five yards a carry with two touchdowns. He's been the workhorse tonight for Garland. Very impressive. And as Saxe gets ready to bring it back, to kick it back off to Garland, that's when you look to see if they're gonna, gonna finally drain the clock here. You know, and since this game, this game also had pretty big implications, no game is bigger than tomorrow with two more teams that are in the top four of District 9, 6A, with Wiley and Wiley East going against each other tomorrow. You know, with Wiley East being right outside of that, that uh, second spot and Wiley being in the, in the running with Saxe. Whoever wins that game is going to determine how the, the rest of this season goes. So it's going to be all eyes on that, on, on that game tomorrow. As Roscoe gets ready to kick this ball off back to Hanks. Looks like they're watching for the onside as it comes and it doesn't get the bounce they want. And it goes right back to Saxe. That's going to be number 19, Chase Thomas, who gets that ball. Falls right into his hands. Saxe's got good field position. Brendan George and company comes back out. And they're looking to just walk away with this with nothing major happening. That'll cost them in the future. First and 10 on the 50 yard line. 5.38 to go in the game as they give it to Hanks on a nice little swing pass. And he's going to keep running as he stiff arms number 15 to the ground. And he gets brought down just shy of the first down. That's probably going to be second and one. Yeah, Josh Ridge gets out of, gets into motion there. And just jukes two defenders, stiff arms one, gets 10 yards. And just like that, they're at the 41. And they're gonna, they're not gonna be in a, a hurry to get this this uh, snap off. They're gonna hand it off to Ridge again. He's gonna find the hole. He's gonna get brought down as a first down. He's gonna be down around 30, 33 yard line. That's a, we've seen a four guys for the Mustangs been running the ball continuously, and that's going to be eight yards for Ridge. And as I say that, Little is in the backfield. Little has five attempts for 17 yards. And he's looking to get his numbers up. They also have Ridge back there, too, so. You don't know who they're going to hand it off to. And they hand it off to Little, who takes it up the middle for a gain of around four. That's going to be second down. Yeah, Little takes that one for about four to five yards. And the clock is moving. Just about four minutes left. It's going to be second and five for the Mustangs. On the 28-yard line, they're taking their their sweet time, and that clock is just just rolling. 
you know they're in a they're in a nice position to just start to start running the ball because obviously Garland has nothing has nothing to stop it as as we see with another first down from Ridge. Yeah, Ridge takes this one up the middle for about nine. He's been very good on this drive. Make that 34 rushing yards tonight for Ridge. It's going to be first and 10 on the 19 yard line. George drops back to throw it, which is pretty interesting to Quinn again. And that's going to be out of bounds. Quinn was looking for a flag there. You know, pretty interesting play calling considering you're up by a pretty big margin. Three minutes left. You could just try to drain as much as you could, but they, they opted to throw it there. You most certainly looking to try to reward Fabian Ibarra there. Number 25. Daniel. Number 25. Jeremiah Bryant, I apologize, in coverage there with a very good job. And it's going to be second and 10 on the 19. As George is on the sideline with Hanks in at quarterback. That's going to be a, a game. That's going to be an unnecessary, unnecessary roughness on the defense. See what the refs have to say about this. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense, number 20. The penalty is half the distance to the goal and an automatic first down. The clock did not start during the play. Please reset the game clock to two minutes, 53 seconds. The clock will start on, the sna on, the, on my signal. Yeah, that's going to be on Amarion Webb, who's had a pretty good game tonight. You know, just letting the emotions spill over into that play there, causing an unnecessary roughness. And it's going to be first and 10 on a 19. Once again, Hanks is in at quarterback. They went ahead and put George on the sideline. Pretty much their entire, their entire offense is on the sideline. As they hand it off to Little. We get some nice gain. And this clock is going to continue rolling. It's going to be second and seven. Yeah, Little gets in there for about three to four yards. And taken down by number 25, Jeremiah Bryant, who was in coverage the other play. It's been pretty impressive tonight. As the clock is about to hit the two-minute mark. It's actually looking, just looking to end this game tonight. Trying to go home, rest up, get ready for next week. And next week up against South Garland. As Little takes it in for a touchdown to just put the icing on the cake. And that'll most definitely do it. As your score is now 55 to 24. Yeah, Little takes this one up right up the middle for four yards. Nearly untouched. Make that six rushing touchdowns for the Mustangs. With a minute and 46 to go, the Mustangs are rolling here at Williams Stadium. As this kick is up, they're going to fake it. And that's going to be a two-point conversion. I don't know if that was meant to happen or that was just a that was just a botched snap and they they went ahead and ran it but that's going to make it 57 to 24 and Taxi's feeling it tonight just looked like a little botched snap they throw it in there it's going to be Aaron Ineshku a junior and he'll get in the highlights too he went ahead and got his he got his little Little 10 seconds of fame there with that touchdown. Well, two point conversion. Saxy comes comes out to kick the ball off to Garland. But you know, Saxy, their upcoming schedule next game next week against South Garland. Um, 
They're just looking to remain perfect on the season uh, in district play and just try to punch their ticket to the playoffs. Well, it's already punched. Just punch their ticket to the district to district champions. As they kick it off to Garland, and they're going to field it, take it up the left side. He's Turner's looking to make some shake. He's running all over the place. He's ultimately going to come out at the 20-yard line. It's going to be Tyrone Crethers. He's been all over the place tonight. And somehow gets to about the 20-yard line there. Very evasive. He almost got tackled about five times on that play. You know, Garland's upcoming schedule has South Garland and Wiley. And it's just looking like both of these teams are looking to come out with as many wins as possible. And just to make the playoffs, as this season is getting closer and closer to the end, it seems like we just started. And Garland is taking their sweet time to get this play going. With a minute and 33 left to go in the game. Route hands it off to Hardy, who's still running, which is pretty surprising this late in the game. I would assume they would have, you know, took Hardy out and let him rest up a little bit. Most certainly, and it looks like an injury on the field. You hate to see that. We're going to take a break here and here at GRS TV. As Salomon Hallaby walks off the field, hopes to see him, hope to see him all right. And Garland's gonna come out and try to finish this game out with a minute, a minute and five in, in rolling. They have time for about, about three more plays. They just run the clock out. Rob's gonna hand it off to Norwood. Norwood's going to shake some defenders, but Saxe's still playing tough regardless of the score. And they're going to take him down after a gain of about, about five. And that's going to be a, uh, a Garland first down. And Norwood's been all over the place tonight. He has, that'll make it 20 rushing yards, and he also has 50 receiving yards. That's definitely a bright spot of your offense. You know, Garland relied heavy on their running tonight. This clock is just slowly ticking down. But as Garland relied on their running tonight, 
had over 100 rushing yards as they throw it deep. He's going to drop it, and that's going to make the clock stop. So based off of what we've seen, we're more than likely going to see. Ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. Second down. As it is second down, we're more than likely going to see one more deep pass from Garland. And that'll, after that, that'll definitely do it for this game. Uh, you know, we just saw a complete momentum shift between the two halves. And it was very apparent, and Saxy just wasn't going to be stopped once it got going, as Route is going to be sacked. And that is going to do it, as it's getting very chippy at the end of the game. That's going to do it here at Williams Stadium. Your score, Saxy 57, Garland 24, as Saxy remains undefeated in district play at 5-0. And Garland is now 4-2 with an overall record of 5-3. And, and as we shut it down here, we will give you these highlights to sit back and enjoy.